Now, this is a big story. It's a claim that the Christian approach to transgender issues is viewed as aggressive. The comment was from the Reverend Dr Malcolm Brown, who's the Church of England's Director of Faith and Public Life. He was saying that's how it's viewed. He was speaking after teaching assistant Christy Higgs won an appeal against her sacking after she'd expressed her views on a trans book in a primary school. What is happening right now is that people with Christian beliefs in a Christian country are being called aggressive bigots in a way that people who are members of another religious community, for example, like the Muslim community, are not. They are treated with tolerance and acceptance, and Christians, in my view, are not. Joining me now is the director of the Family Education Trust, Peter Williams. Peter, why are Christians being treated like this? Is it because people aren't afraid of them? I think it's mainly because Christians very often have gender critical beliefs, as they're called. In other words, they oppose the kind of gender and sexual ideology that's being fed in schools. I mean, we're interested in this as a secular institution, uh, the Family Education Trust, because there are teaching assistants and teachers, as well as parents, who really want to have the freedom to manifest their belief, and that's protected under the Equality Act 2010, the freedom to manifest their philosophical or indeed religious belief that actually gender ideology is harmful. It's mm. not a good thing to introduce children. And when I look at the Facebook posts that Christy Higgs put up in this case, it didn't seem to me like she was manifesting that in a way that was at all problematic. It was certainly you know, straightforward, but it wasn't rude or mean-spirited. And it seems like because Christians are the ones who very often have mm. a very principled opposition to this stuff, they're the ones who are pushed back against. Yeah, indeed. But I find it deeply, deeply offensive because we mm. live in a Christian country and it's OK to have religious views. Mm. And it's all right for other people to have very strong, forthright religious views, mm. but it doesn't appear that it's OK for the Christians. And when Christians say, I believe that there are two genders, I'm very tolerant of anyone wanting to do whatever they want, mm -hmm. that's no problem, but I don't want to believe that there are a 100 genders and one's a two-spirit penguin or whatever they are, yeah. and you instantly become a bigot with out-of-touch views and they want to cancel you. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder whether or not it's time for Christians to be stronger. I agree. I th well, I, I'm speaking personally as a Christian certainly believe it's, tr it's right to be strong in a manner that is rational and charitable. And as long as you are being rational and yep. charitable, I think there's absolutely every case for every Christian doing that. The thing is, it's very difficult because there are so many people in this country who have a kind of totalitarian turn of mind in which they say, if you have these views, you are now unacceptable. You're beyond the pale. We and what's that going to do? It's going to chill people's freedom to speak. Mm. Not maybe freedom of speech, which is where the government comes in and stops you, but it's the freedom to speak, to mm. manifest your beliefs in a way that is rational. But it's worth noting that when Christian teachers have at times spoken up and said that they don't agree with this transgender agenda, mm. they can get hounded, taken to court, mm. find a load of money, lose their jobs and have to sell their house. Mm. There was a school in Birmingham, a primary school, that had a majority Muslim population where the teacher at that school, the head teacher, wanted to put a little bit of education about same-sex relationships on that agenda. And what happened was a load of Muslim parents turned up with a billboard that basically said, you're going to burn in hell, there were megaphones and there was a riot. Can you please explain to me how Christians are the aggressors here? Yeah, well, indeed, there's a, a certain ideology of intersectionality that some people who are the most totalitarian kind of uh, appeal to, where they say, well, actually, if you are a particular skin colour or if you're a particular sexuality or a particular religious minority, then you, all of a sudden you're kind of down the, the kind of spectrum of power relations, and therefore we're not going to oppose what you're doing as much. Whereas Christians are seen as usually, you know, actually we're not obviously all white or all yeah, yeah. sexual, whatever, but on this, we're seen as so far up in that system that, yeah, actually we can be treated much worse than you would with someone who's Muslim or who's Jewish or whatever, who actually has I exactly I think it's time views. that Christians started claiming more, more uh, religious persecution. Mm. I honestly do. Because other people are, uh, are very protected by this. And I really do. I, I don't want people to just use that card. I don't want people to just no. hide behind that card. But I think it is time that people are more vocal about persecution. Because it isn't just active and practicing Christians, by the way. There's people who go to church every single Sunday. When I say we're a Christian country, there's millions of people out there who don't go to church but would loosely identify as being Christian mm. and having those kind of values and norms that are attributed mm. to those. And I don't think those people should be made to feel as though they are bigoted for, for those views. I could talk to you all day about this. We are out of time, but yeah. thank you very, very much for coming thank into you. the studio. Again, I'll chat to you very soon. That, of course, is Peter Williams there.